Alright, welcome back to the July 2020 uh, Ricketts Reef 140 build update. So everything's chugging along pretty good. Uh, a few changes. We'll start with the filtration. So, come in here. Let's freak the fresh out by walking too fast. And what we've got is I've done some hanging egg crate baskets. I got two of them so I can kind of shuffle them back and forth so I can get all the detritus. I get quite a bit of detritus that comes down here in the bottom of the uh, fuge so I like to suck it out while uh, while I do my water changes and I also like to keep this what I was gonna say I like to keep the snails off the chato but for some somehow that sucker made it on there I have no idea how he got on there anyway he seems fine I'll move him later uh, the other thing I did is I changed my containers so I was using kind of like these juice containers and I've gone to these uh, they're glass jars I prefer the glass they're glass jars from a dollar store they cost three bucks each they got these little spigots so if I ever need to manual dose I can just pull them out and uh, right now sorry for the zooming I've got calc alkalinity and calcium still 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 not really dosing any of this right yet um, I have started testing because I got a bunch of new corals I'll go with that in a second and still doing three milliliters a day of my DIY no pox there's my ATO, and under the hood, nothing has changed. I have to take out my, that's my baffle filter there. See, it's a little dirty. I have to take that out because it's had its couple days, and skimmer's there doing its job, doing good. Cleaned that out half a week ago. So yeah, uh, had a, in my DIY power bars, one of my relays popped, I think. I haven't tested it yet. So uh, my controlled heater, I have one heater that's controlled and one that's just on a regular outlet and the control uh, popped, it's just not working. So I don't know, I have to investigate that. It's, it's just a, it's a board that has eight relays on it and uh, they're like, I think $7 each. So not a big deal if I have to replace it, but I have a whole bunch that were open anyway. So I, I just moved it to another one and changed the control settings in my Reef Pi. And the Reef Pi told me, uh, by looking at the heater graphs, that something was askew. So it was, it wasn't, the temperature didn't get low, so the, the relay failed off. Uh, but I had the second heater and it's redundant, and my heat is set to 77 degrees with a two degree either way um, kind of leeway. So if it goes, if it goes over 80, I get an email. If it goes under 75, I get an email. It didn't do either of that, so I didn't get an email, but in looking at the graph, I was like, oh, looks like I'm running a little cool the last couple days. Took a look, and the, I have a 250 that's plugged into the uh, plugged into the controlled outlet and a 200 that's plugged into a regular outlet. And with the summertime, the 200 was keeping it at just above 75. So no problems, corals didn't really feel anything. And uh, it's back up to a, just a regular 77. Depends on if I open the windows or not. So I got a bunch of new corals. <laughs> I now have 42 different corals in here. And I got a whole bunch of more SPS. Uh, fish are all fine. Nothing has changed with the fish. Naso, sailfin, fox face, clown, angel. Uh, where's the bicolor? Bicolor's over there somewhere. The royal grandma, they're, they're all fine. That stinking shrimp is huge. It's absolutely crazy. I think he sheds like once a week. Oh, and there's the mandarin back there. So yeah, all the fish are, are doing fine. No fatalities, thank goodness. Well, the other ones were all kind of strange fatalities, so not too worried. Uh, but in terms of corals, I got a whole bunch of new SPS. Uh, there's a guy, a local reefer, that was kind of uh, restarting his tank, and so he was trying to move out some pieces. So I bought some and offered him to come get some frags for free when he's ready to go again, because you know it's all. I, I think I think people should help each other out more in this this hobby. Since since leaving and coming back, it seems a little more cutthroat. Like with all these coral names and stuff going on, like. $500 frags, phew, blow my mind. Like I, I get it, I understand why people do it, right? They wanna 
they want to make a lot of money off the hype. It's the same thing with clownfish, right? You get a you get a designer clownfish, and you're you're making money off of the hype and off of the uniqueness. And uh, it, it's with corals, it seems a little more strange because you know an acropora is an acropora is an acropora. They all grow about the same rate, um, but you know one just being red and one being green, one being blue, and maybe with a little different speckles here and there. I don't know this whole designer name thing. It just it's new uh, that wasn't around back in the day and then uh, fish I can see it a little more because getting certain types of fish to breed together might be a little tricky uh, but you know that's that's that'll get to a point too where it's saturated and and it'll, it'll have its own kind of lifespan but anyway got a whole bunch of more corals here now there are a lot of them are still coloring up so you'll have to forgive the colors this one's still browned out uh, I just put these in three days ago, something like that, four, three, four days ago. But he's starting to get some, that one's supposed to be bluish with like green mouths. Um, here's some Millie I got from a local fish store. This is a rainbow Millie. There's a whole bunch of other types of corals, a lot of Acropora. So there's that guy. Uh, he's again gonna have like blue heads with some green mouths a little different color base And there's some different Millie's back there. They're greenish Millie uh, This is a light blue with red kind of there's four frags of it there with like a red tip the red tips and the light blue have kind of Gone away since bringing it here and fragging it a bit a bit like I also take all corals off their frag plugs and refrag them and all sorts of stuff uh, but they're all they're coming back slow Probably a couple weeks. They'll be back to their former glory. And this is a darker blue with red tips or at least it was when I bought it There's some more forest fire digi. I chopped a piece off. It looked a little weird, uh, but there's new polyps coming in right away So that's cool. Here's a uh, purple digi This one's cool. Now this one it gets really purple. I saw some pictures of it uh, really purple with some white polyps and it's very, it's very happy. Like that one really never missed a beat. So the, some of the purple's washed out, but it's, I think it'll come back. There's another piece of its frag. There's some like green branching. Oh, and I got a Duncan. Got a nice, nice, happy Duncan. There's about five heads on that one. It's swaying in the wind. There's a piece of red Digi that was up here and fell. Now, speaking of Digi, uh, that one I had just one polyp of, there he is, right there. He's he's growing a stem, what from one polyp? Ha, <laughs> that's cool. Candy canes are slowly growing. Forest fire digi, some more of that. I got some more forest fire back there. I got green star over there. I got green star over here. Oh, well, we all know about green star. This was the one guy I was most worried about. Now his reason why he was shutting down and restarting is he had a bit of a tank situation so we had a whole lot of aptasia in his display and i believe he was restarting because of that like it was to the point that he couldn't do anything without it about it and then this guy here um then he moved everything to a different tank and then that had a crash because i don't know it just it's a new tank and uh so he's he's had to get stuff out quickly and this one uh, this big one it's supposed to be a light blue with dark blue polyps, but it's all brown and green and stuff, so I don't know. We'll see how that one develops. It didn't look good. It's looking better. It was all patchy, but at least the, the flesh seems to be healing all over, and uh, the patchiness is going away. There's a Starburst Monty. That one's doing really well. Starburst seems to be okay. Now, I have, I have tried two caps in here. I've tried a purple and a red, and both caps have died. Uh, they never open polyps I don't know why this starburst seems to be doing fine it's a it's a cap and then this no naughty naughty Monty seems to be doing fine its polyps are out it's a red one uh, just plain red uh, but this blue one <laughs> this blue one I don't know if polyps aren't out so I'm a little worried I've got a encrusting rainbow Monty here and then over here is my acan garden. I just had to move those away and I, oh, that one fell over. Stupid snails. That's why I only have like five snails. 
you guys knock everything down. Uh, I had a bunch of pallies here. I got rid of those. And so uh, there's a galaxy up there. I just didn't want them. I didn't like them. They were growing like wildfire. And I never wanted pallies. At least not those ones. I wouldn't mind some nuclear green ones, but I don't want the toxins and stuff. So yeah, all these new corals are in. Oh, and this, this guy is supposed to be red with like yellow. Uh, this is actually a worldwide coral one. And got lucky on this one. Like he gave me a nice chunk if this is the one I think it is. And like frags of this go for like 120 bucks. So hopefully it pulls through and colors up. It's a red acro. <laughs> I might actually move it. It's a little bright there where it is, so I might I might move it over there as it settles in and then and then move it over. This pavona, it's growing on the right side, which is kind of cool. Unless that stinking bicolor is nipping at it, which I don't think he is. And there's my old green or my old kind of light blue acro. He's always been that color, never changed. When I bought him, that was his color. My bird's nest. I put my ponap up here because he's a he's a bit of a centerpiece. I like that guy. Really like that guy. Some more bird's nest. My hetusa or tosa. Another uh, bally tricolor. It's growing a new stem on the bottom right there. Crusting nicely. Watch it snail. And then my satosa. So it's, it's growing a stem on the right. Oh, and there's the cardinal back there. It's growing a stem on the right and it's starting to encrust on the plug. So I'm getting growth. <clears throat> Not enough to warrant uh, supplementing or adding anything in the tank yet. But soon I'm, I'm starting to take tests about you know once a week after the day after water changes to see if I'm losing any. I do 20 gallons a week roughly of just regular instant ocean. My first box of Instant Ocean I got, it was petrified, like it was hard as rock. And it looked like the box had been the one at the bottom of the pallet. It was just, it was smushed. Everything was smushed. It was hard. I got another box now and that one is fine. It's nice and powdery and there's no problem with it being hard. So, but it didn't seem to affect the salt. Like it was hard, but I think it was hard because it was squished, not because it got wet or anything. It was still in the bag, still fine. Uh, but other than that, everything's good. Lights are working well. Everything else is, is moving along just fine. I hope to get some more frags soon. And then next week I hope to clean out my garage and start working on the LPS tank because I want to get that Kessel out of here. It's nice. I do love the shimmer, uh, but I want to start an LPS tank just for the Kessel. And I also want to work on my LED panels. And my buddy is getting close to uh, finishing his basement every day, getting a little closer. And he's he's got an RO unit now, so he's he's in there. Uh, he's looking at about a 210. He's going to get I think I think he's getting about a 180 or a 210 or something like that, somewhere in that range. And a lot of these corals, or you know, roughly half of these corals, will be going to his. Um, so then more room will open up. And uh, that'll be a, that'll be quite a long time because he's he's still got to finish basement, finish his tank, get it all cycled. So I don't know a year, roughly, till these are there. So they'll be good sized colonies for his tank, and uh, we'll probably build the same LED panels for his, the reef pie, very similar similar setup. But yeah, that's the tank. That's July 2020. Things are moving along. Next week I'll probably start gluing the frags around the rock work and see how that looks. Alright, later.